Let's take a look at some of the equations that you're going to need to solve polar coordinate functions. Um, gosh, where to start? Well, obviously you might have something that looks like a circle, like this. And there's really two ways that you can graph this. You could use the regular old x squared plus y squared equals uh, radius squared. Or you could try to convert this into uh, r equals something. And um, when you do that, you're going to get like, I don't know, r equals 9 cosine theta. Okay. And this would be, you know, this could represent this. But this would actually be more like r equals, I don't know, r equals 9. Uh, there's no cosine theta in here but as soon as you start adding like cosines and stuff this chart this circle this simple circle starts to become warped and shifted and stuff so that's kind of weird um you know it's really important to actually have like a calculator that can graph these things so that you can you could set up the graph otherwise you're gonna have a lot of trouble trying to figure out where the limits are and what the graph looks like and things like that so when you're trying to represent x and y, all you got to do is just say r cosine theta for x and r sine theta for y. You may have seen this in things like vectors, but just so you know, these are not vectors. These are just points. So, yeah. Um, now, next thing we need to do, I suppose this is number one right here. Number two is you need to know how to find the slopes. So the slope is just dy over dx as usual. The slope will help you find things like it. Specific, uh, tangent lines and you know anyway uh, so dy over dx uh, is just gonna be after you do the um, um, product rule because it's it's r cosine theta but rather it's it's y on top so let's go r sine theta these are two separate functions so you got to do dr d theta and then sine theta and then plus um, you know r and then the derivative of that one so then you do that on the bottom as well, and this is pretty complicated, but yes, this is the correct total equation for slope. One way that you can kind of think of this is, what is the slope? The slope is really like, what you're trying to find tangents, right? Tangent lines. How do you make tangent? Isn't tangent just sine over cosine? So really, just remember that it's sine over cosine, and then just, you know, you obviously have to do the dr. And then you're going to add or subtract the opposite and it's just r cosine or r sine, all right? So it's not that not that hard. You kind of think of it like this. All you need is sine over cosine, and then you know you're going to have your dr. Uh, heck, let's not even write, make that too complex. It's going to be dr, so dr sine and dr cosine, and then plus the opposite, and of course you need an r minus r. Okay, so I mean sine over cosine and then you just need the r's all right so that was for this that was number number two i just find the slopes that was not too bad we only really need to think about like two or three more things next we just need to know how to find the area the area is just going to be uh, this equation right here um it's almost as if it was the equation of like a like a triangle or something but um but basically, you're going to have 1 half r squared. And, uh, and, then, and then it's just d theta. I mean, it's just pretty easy to, how to do the area of a, of a uh, polar coordinates. It's, it's easy. r squared divided by 2. And um, do the integral over, over, over uh, theta. So then you just need to do the arc length over here. And that's going to be uh, dr squared plus r squared. Right, we're not really going to derive these equations. If you want to figure out how you figure these out, okay, that's fine. But we're not going to focus too much on that right now. We're just going to try to look at these equations, realize what we need. It's kind of like analyzing our our weapons or analyzing our, our toolkit. We just need to, we know we've got, need to know the areas and we need to know arc lengths. And these are the equations that are going to help us find those. So as long as you kind of understand that and you kind of maybe piece it together, do a little research on how these equations were derived, you know, that's cool. But, you know, not too crazy about going further into that right now. Now, the last thing we need to take a look at 
is going to be our double integral. This is, let's say you want to do an area inside of a boxed region, all right? The boxed regions. What that means is you might have like an integral, like like you might want to do the, the R region and then the theta region. So let's say you have this crazy circle right here and you have like a line right here. And you want to sort of figure out just the area in between the lines and the circle. So what you can do is box in this region by starting your integral from theta to theta, and then also from r to r. And if you box that in, it's just going to be r dr on the first one. Figure this out first. This integral comes first, number one. And then on the second one, you're just going to do this one. This one is number two. All right, then you finish this integral. And uh, this should help you to sort of solve a whole bunch of different polar coordinate equations. You might be finding tangent lines, you might be finding areas, arc lengths, um, or particular boxed regions. And one last thing you might need to remember is this particular thing, that sine squared is equal to 1 half of 1 minus cosine two, uh, 2 theta, and then cosine squared is equal to 1 half of 1 plus cosine 2 theta. I think this is going to help a, a bit, uh, and um, um, polar equations are pretty easy, so it's not that difficult.